Yes. Uh, my presentation is uh, in the beginning a little bit more generic and not only focus uh, on our company, but I will get there also. Uh, we are all students in this industry now because it is so new, and especially around token sales and ICOs. And uh, there are so many different models. I don't think I've seen two identical ICOs yet. And uh, if learning from mistakes makes you better, I should be pretty close to experts soon because we have done a lot of the mistakes uh, that uh, hopefully people coming up after will not do. Uh, we have been looking very closely at a lot of the other token sales. Uh, we have learned from a lot of them. Uh, we established a very solid advisory board very early but we didn't take their advice. Error number one. First of all, we went very quick to market. Uh, our advisor said you need to give yourself multiple months of marketing. You need to build up a community around it. We thought that we could push it out through social media and build a community very quickly. Uh, we looked at what David and Gorang with Indoors uh, did. They were traveling around, doing road shows. When David was in China and Vietnam doing meetings, Gorang was flying all over Europe, presenting their business and building a community. And they spent time on doing that and resulted in, I'm not sure, around 1,500 people on your Slack channel today, which is quite amazing from doing this road show. Right? So, so there is a, is a lesson learned for those of you that are planning token sales. Start early, build a community. Because only a lot of postings on Facebook and uh, LinkedIn and stuff, that won't cut it. Because people need to know who they are dealing with. They want to know about the team, they want to know about the projects. And especially now, maybe some months ago, when we were sitting and marking off this is a good ICO, this one I'm going to join, and you were waiting for three weeks till it starts. But today it's changed, there is like multiple ICOs starting every single day. And by the way, did you mention your date? August 8th. August 8th, it starts same date as ours, two totally different concepts. Uh, we copied the Beijing Olympics. So ours starts 0808, 8 minutes past 8 p.m. Then it's when, when the counter hits zero. But, oops, scaring me here. Uh, I, I can do a little bit on the background story of cost because uh, as David, uh, my original idea was actually also social media. Uh, I started to develop what I called a one-stop solution for social media because I looked at all the channels and to me, Twitter is undersharing, Facebook is oversharing, LinkedIn is for professionals. You have all of these different channels and most of you are using all of them, or at least many of them. So you log in there, you log in there, log in there, log in there. So if you want things done fast and well, hire a lazy person to do it, right? Because he will find the easy way to do it. So maybe I'm that lazy person. So, because I wanted to gather all of this into one platform, but with sort of different rooms you can enter, where you had your Twitter and you had your LinkedIn, you had your Facebook with walls and combining all of this. Then inside this social community, this was not on the blockchain, it was not related to cryptocurrency. We were looking at Facebook and looking at, this was before their IPO. So, and they were talking about Facebook credits, so we were also then planning an internal credit to be used in the, in the system. Uh, then somebody asked, why don't you accept cryptocurrency and start looking into cryptocurrency? And uh, I was a total newbie, I had barely heard about it, and uh, I figured out the onboarding process for crypto was very complicated especially if you're not a techie. For those that have been in the industry, we, we had some chats yesterday who has been longest in the, in the tech and Dave here have been chopping holes in, in data cards uh, back in the 80s and stuff. So, but for, for newcomers to, to enter, I wanted to go in and, and look at it. 
And I mean, there, was, there is a jungle of wallets out there. You don't know which one to choose, right? But even if you get a wallet, you still don't have any Bitcoin or any cryptocurrency. So then you have to figure out where can I buy them, okay? There are exchanges. There are probably as many exchanges as there are tokens almost now. There are hundreds, right? Which one are good, which one is bad, which one have the volume, which don't, which have the security, which don't, right? And then the next one, if you run a store or a shop and you want to accept cryptocurrency, then you want it to go through a payment gateway and not just send direct wallet to wallet. And payment gateways for cryptocurrencies, there are a few, not very many, but at the same time, you don't know which one is good, which one offered this, which one offered that. So then we sort of pivoted the entire idea of then changing over to crypto one-stop solution and instead of a social media one-stop solution. So COS is short for crypto one-stop solution, where at phase one, we are today 124 days into our beta launch. We went live on April 1st. And phase one is developed in-house. So we have a platform. Uh, we have developed a cryptocurrency exchange with currently around 25 trading pairs. We're adding new tokens and, and new coins on, on almost a daily basis now. We have developed a payment gateway and a POS systems for merchants that wants to start accepting cryptocurrency, which is a huge demand for out there and there is more and more onboarding. Uh, we have a proof of developer listing that is basically brand new. Uh, we have a token uh, market cap overview. We have merchant listing. And those are the things that we, we did now in the initial stage. So the platform is already up and running. We are, as I said, 124 days into the process. We have so far registered around 3,000 trading accounts. And we have onboarded uh, around 150 plus merchants already that uh, are now integrating our POS system to start accepting cryptocurrencies. They are from multiple countries, from Japan, Korea, Malaysia, Singapore, uh, several countries in Europe, and we are seeing an increasing demand. So far, we have not uh, opened up for self-registration, so actually they have to submit the form, then our merchant manager will get in touch with them, and they will work on a process. But uh, we are targeting it around 1st of September to have all the plugins, the REST APIs and everything ready. So, so you can just plug in to your existing system, your web shop solution or whatever, uh, when, if you want to start accepting the cryptocurrency. And basically you can tick off which cryptocurrencies you want to accept. All of the currencies traded on the COS exchange will also be on, available on the payment gateway. So you can accept, for example, I, I assume that we will pretty fast after their ICOs list both Hello Gold's tokens and we will list the indoors token. So even if you run a coffee shop, you should be able to accept indoors token, IND, for a cup of coffee, right? And the system is there, it is just to plug in. So it is added also user cases for the other tokens that comes from other token sales. But when we talk about token sales, uh, this is the more generic part. Upon creation, the tokens have zero value. Right? Uh, I attended a speech earlier, and I know several of you were there, by Dr. Gavin Woods when he presented parity. And he was basically on stage with a mic in one hand and his computer coding with the other hand. And he launched a token in, was it 51 seconds? That is how complicated it is to create a cryptocurrency today. Right? Of course, that's, that's just to put a token out there. And he can then put in the parameters and decide, should it be 100? Should it be a million? Should it be a billion? Should it be 21 million? Like... Like Bitcoin, should there be over 100 billion, like uh, Ripple or those? It's up to you. But the amount doesn't matter because 100 times zero or 1 billion times zero is still zero. The value upon creation 
is zero. And then it's when it starts. That is when the job starts to add value, add user cases. Doesn't have to mean in money return, but it can be user cases, right? With an added value. For example, uh, the, the endorse token, where you have a user case, you're using it when you are endorsing, but at the same time, it's also a tradable one. So that can increase in value over time when you see the increased user cases of it. So there is a whole ecosystem to the different uh, revenue models. Most token sales use the ERC tokens that is built on the Ethereum platform. They are easy to make. Of course, you need to know. I could probably not do it because I'm not a tech guy. But uh, they are easy to make, fast to make, upon creation, zero value. And then the, the work starts. Um, why am I? Am I too close? I guess. Uh, there are multi multiple revenue models for tokens, and as I said, opening-wise, uh, I still haven't seen two identical ICOs. There are different user cases, there are different revenue streams, some have a revenue share, some are using dividends, it's a little bit more dangerous word to use these days, especially after uh, what SEC and MAS have, uh, have announced. Uh, some have specific use cases, some have access that you need it to onboard, for example, a platform and uh, to get access to your product, to use a software. There, there are so many multiple uh, models. I've looked at a few of them. Uh, these are all based here in the region. Uh, Fund Yourself Now is a, uh, also a Singapore startup. They ended their ICO yesterday. They had a fairly modest uh, cap and they, and they reached it. And uh, their token is actually going trading as the first pair against Ethereum tomorrow at 4 p.m. on Costotaya. So uh, we're happy also to work with them. They have a model where they are building actually a crowdfunding slash ICO slash token sale slash token generating event slash whatever you want to name it, but a platform to host ICOs in a way. And their revenue model is that the ICOs that wants to be presented on their platform needs to have a portion of the sale that is only accepting as their FYN token. So there is a user case similar to what EOS is doing now with, with what they call a tandem, uh, a, a tandem ICO. They are buying the EOS token now, especially in the China market, because there will come a larger ICO a bit later where 20% can only be paid in EOS. So they are creating a user case with another user case. But they are, they are sharing profits from these projects uh, and reinvesting in, in the projects. Find yourself now, they are in beta, targeting to launch their live version early 2018. You have indoors, I don't have to go so very much into that model because uh, David have just done a good job. Uh, I put this, this is just my interpretation of it that it is partic uh, participation based and there is also a pool token and there is a value driver for uh, that you are getting that onboarding advertisers and stuff have to they can buy the token on exchanges etc from the token holders and then use the IND token to pay for advertising on the platform so there is a user case and there are pools that again will, will uh, generate your revenue as a token holder, if my understanding of IND is correct. It's always dangerous to talk about people that are in the room. <laughs> we have 10X, everybody knows about 10X. They made the Singapore community proud by hitting an all time high and raised around 80 million. Uh, yes, between 70 and 80, all depends on the Ether price. So, and that goes a bit up and down lately. So, uh, I've called them a revenue share and a participation cashback model because they have a split model 
where their business model is based on a cash back from MasterCard. Uh, they are open about this. The numbers are out there in the white papers and everything, so I'm not revealing any secrets. Uh, if I recall correctly, they are having a 2% cash back from the card providers. Uh, out of those fees, they are giving 0.5% to the token holders paid in Ether. And then all the card holders are getting a 0.1%, but that is paid in their own token, which is called Pay, P-A-Y. So there is a mixed model where they are giving out both Ether, that I would call of current value. On the other side, they are giving out the Pay token, which is more based on potential future value. It is already tradable, so you can call it also present value in a way because you can already now trade it on multiple exchanges with fairly nice trading volume very quickly. They did an amazing marketing job. They really built a strong uh, community before they started. Uh, very skilled people that are out there with, uh, they are doing live presentations on, on Facebook at least weekly. Uh, with, uh, with Julian, they have a solid team here in Singapore. So uh, absolutely, and I know that probably many in this room are already holding some pay tokens because they participated. Uh, they've, yeah, no, I'm not gonna go there. You almost went there yourself. You, did, you just didn't mention where, <laughs> but, it, but it's all good. Uh, we have Hello Gold, which is a, uh, uh, what, what do we call it? Banking in gold for the underserved. And you will hear more about them afterwards and they can, they can probably go more into details. Uh, but it's a revenue share in savings in form of gold-backed tokens. And uh, the, the GBT will, be, will enable crypto investors to cash out of normal tokens into gold as opposed to fiat. So there is also a, a sort of a split revenue model because it comes with two tokens in the system. So, but uh, I'm not going too much into details on the Hello Gold one because the next speaker is from Hello Gold. Then we have uh, our model. Uh, ours uh, are classified as a revenue share based where we have uh, this designed this model that we call the cost fair share model. Uh, on the cryptocurrency exchange, if we start over here, the uh, transaction fee when you are trading starts at 0.2%. It can get, get lower based on your own trading volume. Uh, whatever pair you are trading, if you, for example, are trading Bitcoin to Ether, uh, both taker and maker pays a fee. Right? And uh, one can have 0.2% fee, but the other guy can have higher trading volume, so he is on 018 so that, that can vary. But whenever a trade goes then, there is a fraction of a Bitcoin and there is a fraction of an Ether that is being paid in transaction fees. Those fees goes into the transaction fee bucket. 50% of those fees are then going back again to token holders not in the form of the cost token, but if the fee is collected in Bitcoin, it is paid out in Bitcoin. If it is collected in Ether, it is paid out in Ether. If it is connect, uh, collected in Pay or IND or whatever currency that is traded on the cost platform, it is paid out in that one. So in a way, when you're holding a cost token, you're sort of hedging it against all the other tradable ones. And the more tradable and the higher trading volume a cryptocurrency have, the bigger portion of the transaction fee will be in that one. So basically, unless you plan to trade the cost token, you really don't have to look at the trading price of it. Because you can just buy it and you can park it just put it aside, put it on a paper wallet and lock it in your safe and you don't think about it. And on a weekly basis, there will be paid out fractions of Bitcoin, Ether, TAS, NEM, ARC, whatever uh, currencies that the fees are collected in at the same time. So you're basically building your portfolio. For the payment gateway, 
uh, all merchants then around the world that starts to plug in, start accepting cryptocurrencies. Now we are talking bigger numbers because, I mean, people can buy a car with Bitcoin, for example. People can, down the road, buy a house. They can buy holidays. They can buy travels. We already have an uh, energy company from uh, Europe on board that currently have 70,000 clients. And uh, they are offering now to pay their gas and el electricity bills in cryptocurrency through our payment gateway. The transaction fee there is 0.75%. 50% of the fee go back to the token holders, the same as with, with, the, with the currency. These are the current two features we have, but we are adding more and more features. And as long as the features involves a transaction fee or a fee that comes to costs, it will be split 50-50 and go into the distribution model and go back to the token holders. So uh, instead of only trading potential future value, which will be the cost token in itself, because as I said, upon creation, the value is zero, you are actually uh, earning in current value in form of Bitcoin and Ether and, and all those tradable ones. <coughs> it's a little bit just short of, of what I said. Cost is short for crypto one-stop solution. We have a huge roadmap. Uh, we have uh, signed up a lot of partnerships already of services that will be added. Uh, once the token sale is over, we have a backlog of uh, services that will be added onto COS. Uh, I can mention a few of them. is uh, B2B remittance through a Singapore-based company. Uh, we have P2P remittance uh, with a Philippine company. Uh, we have uh, screening of incoming transactions for whitelisting, similar to what, uh, what uh, David talked about from CoinFirm, that are screening, especially uh, for now they're only doing Bitcoin and Dash, but if the, if the wallets have ever been involved in or red flagged from the Silk Road's uh, similar activities, the uh, incoming transactions will be rejected. So, and that's to try to avoid that those people use exchanges to move the funds in, swap it around and move it out again. So that, that is for added, added security. We have uh, done a strategic partnership also with Fund Yourself Now. So we're gonna help and build the entire ecosystem for doing ICOs and crowdfundings. Uh, through, we have a partnership now also with ICO rating and TAS. And if you add to the fund yourself now, you basically you have an hour exchange. Then you have a company like uh, ICO rating that can uh, validate and sort of audit your white papers and, and give an, an investor score. Uh, then you can host the ICO through the services of Fund Yourself Now. And once the sale is over, you can list the token. And it can all be done then through the same platform, which is COS. So all of these services will be added onto the platform. And we are, right now, we are basically assigning two, three MOUs with companies per week. So, uh, and we are getting a big backlog of implementations. Our token swap starts August 8th, same as indoors. It will start uh, eight minutes past 8 p.m. in the evening. A copy of the Beijing Olympics. Uh, one ether, 600 costs. We have a bonus system where the first five days will give a 15% bonus, and then it will decline for every five day period. Uh, the sale uh, ends on 6th of September. Uh, I'm gonna be honest, uh, we have set a high cap. We have no minimum cap, but uh, we are also modest in our approach and say we don't expect to sell out. Uh, we have no minimum cap. We have an internal happy cap. And there is a hard cap. The hard cap is very high. It is based on a three to five year roadmap where the funds will be locked and held in escrow 
by two Singapore law firms and one rep from the advisory board. They will be released annually throughout 2018, 2019, and 2020 in equal portions based on that the multi-sig private key holders, which are the two law firms and one from the advisory board, approves the management budget that we need to present on an annual basis. So even if the cap is high, it is not, and this is also a lesson learned from other ICOs that are raising 50 million, 100 million, and they are stating throughout their ICO that they have an escrow, but the escrow is only for the ICO. Once the ICO is over, boom, there they have 50 million, right? And those money are supposed to last. They are supposed to last long to build your business. The work starts basically when your token sale is over. So you need to make sure and also tell the public uh, your, uh, your model for this, how you plan, what is your strategy going forward. So to ensure that you don't get in, that there is a lot on the different chats where people are, are using the word Lambo, right? You're raise, raising 100 million and then the next day there is five in the executive team that all suddenly have red Lamborghinis parked outside. That is not the purpose of a token sale, right? And show the, show the world, tell the world that that is not your intention and say why this is not even possible because there won't even be available money to buy Lambos because it will be portioned along with the growth of the company and you have milestones that you reach. Some are using milestones uh, based releases, also can be a good model, but have it vetted, have it uh, controlled by someone outside. There is not one single shareholder, there is not one single from the management, uh, not one single stakeholder in the company that will hold any of the private keys for our escrow. So that is basically it. The process is fairly easy. Uh, we are also aware of all of these scams. We have done a slightly different model. We have uh, built the ICO engine ourselves. We are hosting it ourselves. So basically you register on cost.io, then you can click on contribute now you are basically generating an account with, with costs. You get a verification email. You have to click on that to validate your accounts. You create the password. So you have your own password protected dashboard. So you log in there and when the counter hits zero, there will be an option to click for contribute now and a unique Ethereum address will be generated for you only. So doesn't matter which chat you see, if it's Telegram, WhatsApp, even our own Slack channel or whatever, there will never be posted any address because every contributor will have its own unique address that is only visible behind your own password protected dashboard. So that is, is our way of ensuring that our job then is only to tell people about that process that so you don't get scammed that there won't be any address out there for anyone to post. So whenever if you see anyone posting that this is the address for costs, it's fake, it's a scam. Because nobody knows, we don't even know. Because it gets generated when you click the button. And that is uh, behind password protected area. Then you contribute, you will instantly see how many cost tokens you are entitled to. Uh, the uh, DAO system that will start generating revenue is targeted to go live on 1st of October. We wanted to have the gap between the trading start of the token and the release of the DAO as minimum as possible. So we decided that we are releasing and starting trading of the cost token on September 20th. The sales ends on September 6th. So two weeks later, the uh, token will be released and then another 10 to 12 days later, uh, the DAO will uh, start its first revenue share. Of course, in the beginning, it will be fractions, it will be small. We have uh, big goals and big dreams. Our long-term vision is to become a top 10 exchange within three years, and also a top five preferred payment gateway for cryptocurrencies. 
in the current market to hit top 10 on exchanges. It requires around $100 million in daily trading volume. Uh, where, what that number will be three years from now, I don't think you will reach top 25 with 100 million. So uh, depends, of course, if, if the world centralizes a bit. But uh, the process is easy, on board, show and dashboard, and hope to see many of you participating from Tuesday onwards. Thank you. Wow.